and welcome everybody here on Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube. For some uh, special event here, we got a new festival event uh, that just started today. This is Standard Cascade. Um, as you can see the, the rules here, it says bring your standard deck, play games with a twist. The first spell you cast each turn will let you cast another spell from your deck without paying its mana cost. So how it works is basically it only works for the first spell you cast each turn. But that spell um, has Cascade, which was a keyword um, back in the Alara block if you've played, if you've played with that uh, before. Um, but if you haven't, basically you exile cards in the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with CMC less than whatever spell you cast. And then that spell you get to cast for free. So if you've ever played like Bloodbraid Elf, you know how this works. So uh, one mana cards having Cascade isn't going to do anything because there's not um, spells that cost less than one mana. But two mana and more, uh, then you know you get to uh, get some free spells. So this should be just a fun event. You know, it's best of one games here. There are a few cards that are banned, cards that would prevent you from casting those spells, such as Teferi, Lavinia, Deafening Silence, and Rule of Law. Um, Field of the Dead, I don't know, it, it's banned Lucky Clover, I guess, because it'd just be so many copies. And Fae of Wishes and Flax and Intruder, because you actually get to cast the, um, whenever you exile the spell, like Flax Intruder costs one mana, you'd actually be able to play the seven mana adventure part of it for free and so that would be pretty crazy so they just kind of got rid of those one card they didn't ban was once upon a time and so casting once upon a time for free does trigger the cascade and you get to put a one drop into play so there are going to be decks playing um you know getting a free um like pelt collector or gilded goose all the time on turn one because of once upon a time so that's that definitely seems like something very good to be doing um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing some Orzhov Sacrifice. Um, a lot of one drops in this deck. And of course, casting a one drop as your first spell uh, for a turn isn't great because of Cascade. But we're going to be casting these things. And again, it's only the first spell. So hopefully, you know, we cast a two drop and then cast a one drop if these are in our hand. Um, but, you know, we're going for the death by a thousand pings with having a bunch of Corpse Knight pings. We should be able to get a whole lot of Cauldrons Familiars and Witches Ovens uh, with the help of cascading into them. Um, and then, you know, the Corpse Knight pings, the Yara pings, the Cruel Celebrant pings, and so on. Um, Spark Harvest is awesome in this format because if you, if you hit it off of your Cascade, you don't have to do the additional cost um, so it's just one mana destroy target creature or planeswalker. So, you know, we have like one mana removal that we can hit off of uh, these other things. So we're going with a bunch of spark harvest here. Um, so that's uh, so that's what we're doing there with the spark harvest. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, that's not true. You st oh, you do still have to pay the extra cost for spark harvest. I thought that I thought you didn't. I guess, but I, I guess, I guess you do because you're still casting it. Oh, well then why, why did somebody tell me to put Spark Harvest in my deck? Well, never mind. We're getting Murderous Rider back. I thought they told. I thought somebody said it in chat that you didn't have to, and so that Spark Harvest is going to be very good. Oh, so it worked for you, Jeebus. You didn't have to actually sacrifice anything. Um, I don't know. Let's let's just give it a try. I guess we'll just give it a try, and if it doesn't work, we'll take it out. Yeah, we'll just test it. Why not? That's what we're doing. We're testing stuff. Yeah, so we'll just test it. Because I guess, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know how it's going to work. We'll see. You have trying it for science. So Jism says Cascade pays the cost for you, so there should be no need to sacrifice. Yeah, it does say you may cast that card without paying its mana cost, but it's not a mana cost. 
So I don't know. We'll kind of see what happens. All right, we'll keep this. Okay, so in so normally, so we should have to be able, to, so yeah, so it should have to still pay additional costs from Cascade because it's not a mana cost, but maybe it it. Uh, Maybe it works for us. Who knows? So, Ley Line of Combustion... I do not want to hit Spark Harvest because they have no targets. We want to hit... Yeah, there we go. Like a Cauldron Familiar, Witch's Oven, anything like that. Priest is target player. Um, this is uh, you or one of your permanents. So like, if we do activate Priest, we take damage. Yeah, because like, there's just nothing to actually kill with that right now. So we don't even get to try it. Yeah, this says whenever, whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability that we control, uh, deals two damage to us. So if we target any... Target them or target any of their stuff. We take two damage each time we target something with that with that late line. They're targeting a Yara. Maybe I should have got Midnight Reaper in play. First, what they get? Foulmire Knight. So they can do the Profane Insight or cast Foulmire Knight. Either one. I guess I already know I have one Spark Harvest down at the bottom. Oh no! I kind of just like assumed that button would be like cast, you know, and I just I just clicked that button too fast. No, I didn't get that Cruel Celebrant. Uh, that hurt. <laughs> that happened to you too. Yeah, it's just like this huge button that says decline, like right in, like that pops up, and you're like, oh, click the button. I'll cast my spell, right? Declined. Oh, they do that so fast that you don't get to see their their deck.
Yeah, so you do have to do the sacrifice cost. Alright, so Spark Harvest not looking great. All right, so we're going to go back and take out the Spark Harvest because that's not a, a great card to cascade into then at one mana. Why no Pioneer at all? Because Pioneer is not on Arena. And I don't really want to play Magic Online. I'm sure Pioneer is a really cool format. And so is, so is Modern, so is Legacy. Healer's Hawk. What do you think hold full control means? It means I need to respond first. Yeah, too late for that. So basically, I wanted the Cruel Celebrant to come into play, and then I wanted to sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar to draw a card, and then I'd bring back the Cauldron Familiar there. and would have triggered the Cruel Celebrant. I know, this arena's just killing me. <laughs> no, this does not target it. No, it's just no, it's just choose afterwards. Because we saw that before, like off the gruesome menagerie, we revealed Spark Harvest and I sacrificed um the priest and then brought it back. So no, it doesn't I didn't have to have targets first. No, I, yes, I, I wanted the Cascade effect to resolve, and then after the Cascade effect resolves, then you can still respond before the normal thing resolves. Yeah, you know, like, you can do that, like, with um, with other Cascade tre creatures. You know, it's cas Cascade triggers. You let that trigger resolve. Yeah, and then plus, yeah, the Ayara ETB triggers. You should be able to respond to that. Oh, bring this back up. All right, want to know. All right, so Spark Harvest doesn't work. Let's go back and take that out of the deck. So just play three murderous riders. 
Um, and could just play all four murderous rider. Is there some? I just play the fourth hunted witness or gutter bones. Like gutter bones is better with a Yara, but hunted witness is better with witch's oven and priest of forgotten gods and everything like that. We'll just play one gutter bones. Do you think we could we could just play like some other top end card? Um, I'll get a wrinkle in here. Wrinkle's fun. All right, so we're going to edit that. Take out Spark Harvest. Play one wrinkle. We need to master some pranks. And then... Um, we have three. All right, find a land. Good. Three murderous riders. All right, updating deckless command. Glade. Why would you want to heal Glades? Alright, well I don't have a 2-drop to also play. I think it's worth it to trade with Paradise Druid to keep them from having less mana when I can play Soren and return my Corpse Knight. Ah, these Healer of the Glade, so much life. Gain nine life? At least they probably don't have very many more healer of the glades to hit. I don't know, maybe they have another ten of them or so. Gotta run out of these eventually. It's an extra 12 life so far. I guess I'm gonna need 32 pings instead of 20 pings to win. So when one of their creatures dies, they gain a life? Oh no, you can get more life gain. Stop. All right, Midnight Reaper. Get on in there.
Vampirism is a useful trait. So, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of waiting to play these Cauldron Familiars because whenever, you know, now if I bring back Cauldron Familiar, it pings twice because we have two Corpse Knights. If I would have brought it back earlier, it would have only pinged once. But now it's going to ping twice. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the plan. Stack a bunch of Corpse Knights and Cruel Celebrants and things like that. I mean, prepare for war. I mean, War of the Sparks, you know, it's in. It's in standard. I'm playing some War of the Spark cards. I don't know, the Soren. Oh, yeah, this is just all triggers. Reefs versus cats. So much clicking, okay. More pings. More pings. This should be just be lethal, I think. Machine gun. <laughs> uh, just mow him down. <laughs> and that's why we just sacrificed the cats and let them sit in the graveyard and waited to bring them back. Look at my opponent's battlefield. Like, how, how would you ever get through that? You never get through that. You have four healer of the glades. You never get through that. All right, two zero. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. That was fun. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to go under, we're not trying to go through it, just going over. Mm. Yeah, I guess. Oh, whoops. I guess I need to shock in with the Goblet Shrine there. Yeah, I need to shock in with the Goblet Shrine to play both Witches' Ovens. Because, you know, I'm going to be tapping out here, so. That was bad. I could have the other Witch's Oven just in play right now. If I did things better. So I could have had two foods. Oh, Epic Downfall? Oh, I should have let this Maelstrom Nexus thing happen. Oh, they didn't even cast it? They could have exiled my Midnight Reaper. They could have exiled there. Let me remind you to fear those born of 
darkness. I require your body, not your soul. Dungeon Geist. Oh wow, they're like four colors. Conclave Tribunals and stuff. Oh, they're like a hundred card deck. I may need to just Murderous Rider this thing so it doesn't kill my Soren. So yeah, otherwise my Soren is going to die. This figure. Which figure? Oh, because it's each turn? Yeah, that's a good call. So yeah, I could have just led with the Corpse Knight. And then upkeep Murderous Rider. Like, they could have had counter magic or something to protect their, their card. But then I, I would get the extra with the extra Maelstrom Nexus trigger. Cascade, yeah. Alright, so that's the first time that came up. So, good to know. Casc instant speed Cascade stuff. Um... I don't really want to. Play Gruesome Menagerie yet. Let's see if we hit the cat. There we go. Get a cat. I'll just get these things in play. All right. Because that was going to be. I guess that was going to be my opponent dying, right? I guess I, I should have minus two and grab the Corpse Knight first. Because let's see, they're at 13. So yeah, I, I go grab Corpse Knight. They take another one to go to 12. And then I sack this. That's another two. So I just need guy to get 12. So that's two. Bring it back. Uh, three, four, five. Sack it. Seven, eight. Um, bring it back. Nine, 10, 11. And yeah, attacking. Yeah, so we had lethal there. Could have dealt more damage if I would have minus for Corpse Knight before doing stuff. But all right, here we go. We're three now. Yeah, I know what Once Upon a Time is is amazing in Cascade. I would just I want to do something different. But yeah, Once Upon a Time is pretty hard to beat. So I think I would have drawn Soren if that was the first card.
Cool. Didn't even block with the goose. So, yeah, you've been playing Flash to let you be able to cascade on both turns, or somebody else have Wilderness Reclamation. Yeah, Wilderness Reclamation, untap your lands and everything. Seems pretty ridiculous. What? what are we doing here? Hmm. This is tough. A Yar is really good too, but I feel like I'm supposed to murderous rider this spellbreaker. But a Yara would be nice to have in play. Play a Yara. <laughs> yeah, Team of Reclamation's good. Yeah, yeah, you're looking for a new deck. Yeah, Team of Reclamation is a good choice. Um, I would, I would wait till tomorrow though. We're gonna get new announcements about BNR, like new BNR announcements tomorrow. Um, so I'd wait till then, really, before spending wild cards and stuff. Um, so they shouldn't be playing like these these spells. Like they're double spelling. They you shouldn't be double spelling. Just wait, wait till next turn before you play your Paradise Druids and stuff. So you get. Get more, get more cascade stuff going on. Let's get the Spellbreaker out of here. I mean, that thing has Trample. Blocking it doesn't matter. So yeah, could have blocked and then sacrificed, but it has Trample, so... Yeah, I just have it to just want to block. Cats are good blockers. Everybody knows that. So with being able to just flood the board with geese means that my priest is not as valuable.
I'm gonna double block the Paradise Druid. Does he have Trample? No. And block one of those. So many triggers. So many things. Yeah, it would definitely be easier if they just auto sacked the food. But it's it's advantageous to just use your witch's oven as much as you can. Alright, I'm going to draw some cards here, see if we can spend this other two mana, see if we draw a two drop. Uh, plus, I guess I probably just have lethal here. Oh, it's not lethal. They have a food they can crack. Okay. Now could be. Now could be lethal. We gotta do 10 damage. I think we do 10 damage. I think we can do 10 damage. Because now we get the die trigger. Yeah, I guess we were gonna have lethal even without activating cruel, even without cruel celebrant. The celebrant's only done well, like three damage or two, two damage. Yeah, I think it's only only did two damage, and of course with priest. Um, no, I guess maybe we did need it. Thanks, three man. All right, we are four now. And here we go. Let's get that five win dream. One more. Get the, the clean sweep. <laughs> GG's. Hmm. Don't have the white mana, but I'm going to keep this hand. This hand looks pretty good. So we're going to keep it. You know, because our, our priest on turn one is going to... Or sorry, our priest on turn two is going to hit something else, and all we have to do is draw any land, even if it's not a white mana source, and then we get to start playing a Yara's, and then life is good. Temple of Milady. Ooh, white mana. Life's even better. I think I want to. I kind of want to just leave with the Corpse Knight. Just get another thing that gets triggers down right away. Cause 
Because, yeah, Priest isn't as good in this format where you automatically... You just get free one drops. Yeah, so we'll lead with Corpse Knight. This will be a tough one. This is definitely the best deck that we've played against here so far. Golgari Adventures. This is definitely the best deck that we've played against. So this will be a tough one to win. And, of course, we're on the draw, too. But our hand's good. All right, now, now to find Witch's Ovens. With having triple a Yara, that's where I'm going to be going. See, so even if they use removal on a Yara, we're good because we got more of them. We're pretty fortunate my opponent just keeps hitting these Foulmire Knights. It's maybe their worst hit. Could use a land drop. I want to cast the Murderous Rider on their turn um, so that they can't just play another Questing Beast. Like, if they do have another Questing Beast, it, you know, like, so I want to do it during attacks here. Better not veil summer me. Okay, good. Witch's Oven. That'll help Cauldron Familiar. Oh gosh, Doom Whisperer. That thing's gonna kill me. Bantu? Really wish we hit a land drop and so I could go th three drop plus. 
oven, but I think I need to play oven. I think. So yeah, I would have gone murderous rider as my three drop. So I think we just go priest and then oven. Awesome, another oven. This should be lethal actually now, right? Yeah, that's just lethal. Jeez. All right, looks like we're going to get that 5-0. Oh, I guess I didn't realize that, you know, like this, this deck kills so fast. You know, they're at 10 and we have, you know, we have a whole lot more. You know, we could have killed from like 15 there. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I wasn't really thinking about that, but then realized that, oh, right. Okay, so there we go. 5-0. Pretty fast there. 48 minutes, I guess, is what it took. But that, you know, that included um, the talking about the deck and everything like that. So, you know, like 45 minutes. So there we go. Orzov Sacrifice. Um, would I replace Priest with anything? Yeah, it kind of felt like Priest was the worst card, right? Um, so yeah, it did feel like Priest was the worst card and, and it wouldn't be bad to replace this. Um, I, th I think you would want like a two mana card. Is there, is there anything else that pings that deals one damage, uh, that, that would work there? Um, <clears throat> yeah, then maybe not the wrinkle either. So yeah, basically priest rankle, those could probably be replaced, but priest, you know, was still triggering a Yara. Um, you could go with uh, Charming Prince over priest, but you know, then it's it's another white spell. It doesn't trigger a Yara, but you do, you know, you flicker like these things to, to trigger them again. Um, no, I would not. I would not replace Gruesome with Citadel. I liked Gruesome a lot. Um, Lazotep Reaver, that's not bad. Yeah, Lazotep Reaver is two bodies. To trigger these things. Yeah, honestly, maybe maybe just Lazatep Reaver. That could be that could be something. Yeah, Wrinkle never really came up, but yeah, just a three you know, three power haste. That could be something. Maybe a couple of the priests. Maybe you keep like two priests, two reaver kind of thing. Just kind of split it so you don't have just only priests, but Against some some opponents, priest will be good, and you know priest helps with like your cruel celebrant and stuff. Um, you like uh, enforcer more to have that death touch. I could see that too, especially against like these gruel decks. You know, block block gruel spellbreaker with death touch. I like that. Yeah, maybe maybe just play enforcers. Actually. Yeah, I like it. Now, Phil Life means another one drop. I, th I think we want less less one drops. I'm not sure if I love the Hunted Witness even. Uh, no, Hunted Witness is good. But, yeah, we want... Because basically we want we want the two drops to always hit Cauldron Familiar Witches of, and that's the thing is you just want your two drops to put these two cards into play. So that's kind of the problem with playing Hunted Witness. Um, like maybe you could just take those out and just play like two more Reavers and maybe play a 23rd land or just maybe just play like Reaver and Enforcer and then that just gives you more bodies and it's better for a Yara. Yeah. And then you only have Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven for your only one drops. Um... Yeah, so I think I think that's what I would 
that's what I'd recommend there, actually, probably. Um, that would make sense. That does make Gruesome Menagerie worse. But not that much worse. It's still fine. It's still good. Um, not really. Like, having the more more than one Reaver at the time is really bad to somebody, but not really. I mean, you have ways to, to sacrifice that extra token with, like, Witch's Oven and a Yara, and it still just triggers stuff. Um, you know, just, you know, it's just, like, the one creature. Basically, when it's by itself, it's just, like, playing Priest of Forgotten Gods if you're, you know, not a math, you know, if you're not triggering the second part. It's, like, basically the same as playing the Priest anyway. So, it's fine. Um, gruesome scavenger. I don't. I don't know what that card is. I don't know what that card is. I don't think that's in standard. Yeah, I don't think that's a card. Okay. Um, no, so that's the thing. is With the Cascade, you really want to Cascade into these uh, one-drops all the time. But maybe with, with upping this curve here, maybe you just want like a, a 23rd land, honestly. Maybe you just want that. Okay, anyway... Um, all right, if you're watching, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, uh, you know, hit that like button over there. I uh, hope you subscribe. Let me know in the comments, what were you playing? You know, you can let everybody else know. What were you playing for this Cascade event? What were you having fun with for that? Um, but are you sure? So Gruesome Scavenger? All right, I'm just going to look up. Yeah, that's not that's not a card name. I just looked it up on like a card search. That's not that's not a card name. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, you could try you could try the original deck that we were playing. I'll just keep that deck list. You could try uh, this version also um, with taking out um, the hunted witness and the um, a gruesome scourger. Okay. Okay, ETBs that deals damage to target opponent or planeswalker equal to the number of creatures you control. Um, yeah, five mana is just too much. Like basically, yeah, it's just it's not a yeah, it's not going to be good enough for five for five mana. Yeah, five five mana is just too much for the deck. You just want these cheap things here. All right, Hawkeye, we got a five zero. That's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, Hawkeye's excited. All right. Anyway. Um, so uh, again, um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you know, leave those comments. Let me know what, uh, how you like the format and what you're playing, all that kind of stuff. Let me know what you think about this deck. But that's a 5-0 there. So thank you so much for watching. And both me and Hawkeye, we'll see you for the next video. Have a good night.